I have spoken at length about the absolutely fantastic job Governor DeSantis has done in the state of Florida over the last year. He has put on a clinic in good governance, how you deal with the media, and being able to keep a cool, clear, calm head, looking through all of the hype, and making good decisions for the people of this state. There's a fantastic article out on Fox News. I'll put it down in the first pinned comment. They accidentally did some reporting over at Fox. A woman from New York visited Florida and could not believe how different it was than what she had read in the media up there. She had thought we weren't taking the virus seriously. We do take it seriously when we need to take it seriously. She talked about seeing playgrounds with kids, not wearing masks and smiling and playing. You see, we focus on those most at risk, those in the nursing homes, the elderly. And as a result, we have 50% fewer deaths than New York when we have 2 million more people than they do. And that's just fact. But today's video wasn't really about that. It's about something that I have been remiss in reporting. And it has to do with an entirely different topic. It has to do with our lieutenant governor. Her name is Jeanette Nunez. And quietly, behind the scenes, she has been doing some very, very important work for the United States Space Force. Back in November, the six finalists for the command center of the Space Force were announced. Off at Air Force Base in Nebraska, Peterson, in Colorado, that's NORAD, NORTHCOM, Cheyenne Mountain. Kirtland Air Force Base, Global Strike Command in New Mexico. Off at Air Force Base, by the way, STRATCOM. Lackland Air Force Base, Port San Antonio. This is where the Air Force does all of their um, basic training. At one time, they had the language school there before they moved it out to California. Redstone Arsenal. Army Missile Command is one of the finalists, which I thought was very strange. And here in Florida, Patrick, what is now known as Patrick Space Force Base, it was renamed in December. It used to be Patrick Air Force Base. It's just south of uh, Cape Canaveral, Cocoa Beach, that region. Now, to my mind, looking at all six of these locations, this is the clear front runner. For that command, we already have Southcom down here, um, two other uh, military commands down here. It would be a great fit. It would be a great fit. But in my research, in my research, I found some very strange things about these other locations that I don't think a lot of people have known. Here's the announcement. Here, Pentagon announces six finalists as locations for U.S. Space Command headquarters. Pentagon narrows choices, remaining candidates. We've covered that. It'll be called Spacecom. Department of the Air Force value at each location. will now conduct both virtual and on-site visits at each candidate. They are supposed to announce it, what they said, early 2021. Well, here we are, early 2021. Let's start with the first one. Off at Air Force Base, Stratcom. Now, this is probably a good fit for obvious reasons. They have been really lobbying hard. They've offered $107 million to the Air Force. Um, there's even local schools that have gotten involved in this. Um, it has a very interesting history. Strategic Air Command. At one minute past midnight on 9 November 1948, Offutt gained international prominence when it became the host for headquarters Stratcom, um, which was moved to Andrews, New headquarters, September 2018. President Bush off at conference on 11 September 2001. I think that's this place's big claim to fame. Now, this is their logo right here on the right. Nothing weird, nothing out of the ordinary. But as we go through these logos, one of them is going to show something that is going to make a lot of people 
sit up and go, wait a minute, what does that have to do with the Air Force or space? So that's off it. The next one is Kirtland. Okay, this is Global Strike Command. This is the Air Force base that was part of the Manhattan Project. There were at one time 3,000 nuclear weapons located underneath Kirtland, stored here. Very spooky base. It's way out in the middle of nowhere. So all sorts of clandestine things could happen here. It's uh, not too far away from a military intelligence command down Fort Huachuca. I'll give you, of course, all of these links, and you can read what they did during World War II, what they were part of, bomber training. But they're basically the story of the Manhattan Project, atomic weapons development, nuclear weapons development. I'm not sure that's a really, really good fit for the Space Command, but I can see why they would be considered. Special Weapons Command. And... Their logo is here, Global Strike Command. Once again, very, very appropriate. Got the globe, got some wings, red, white, and blue star, a little bit of gold. Nothing out of the ordinary. Our next candidate is, give me one second here, Patrick, okay, here in Florida. Now, to my mind, this is the best choice because of the vast majority of Air Force and military resource that's already here, infrastructure already built. Um, other reasons, which I will leave to your imagination. Um, it's not very far from certain places, hint, hint. It was one at one time known as Naval Air Station Banana River. It was also the Air Force Base that dealt with Flight 19. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with the uh, uh, bomber flight that strangely went missing over the Bermuda Triangle. And even the rescue plane that was sent out to look for him, that disappeared. And no trace was ever found. So that's kind of Patrick Air Force Base's claim to fame. A lot of the scenes, the black and white scenes from I Dream of Genie, remember the old black and white version, um, were shot at Patrick Air Force Base. But it's uh, strategically probably the best choice. And this is the logo. 45th Space Wing. Now, are you guys ready to have your minds blown? I was looking through this, and, you know, Redstone, Redstone Arsenal is um, Army Missile Command, so I can see why they might be considered. Um, probably not going to be chosen, but, you know, there is an argument to be made. Um, Afistra, Air Force Intelligence Surveillance Reconnaissance, at Lackland. Um, Lackland was kind of in San Antonio, kind of a hodgepodge of uh, parts of Kelly Air Force Base. Um, Security Hill all got kind of conglomerated together into what we now know as Lackland Air Force Base. But here's the one that's going to blow your mind. And I saved it for last just for this reason. Peterson Air Force Base the headquarters of NORAD Northcom. Now, you're thinking of a logo, you're thinking up, you know, some great way to represent the Air Force. Check out their logo, guys. Can somebody tell me what a dragon with multiple heads or a beast maybe rising out of a sea here, has to do with the Air Force? 
Some of you will get that biblical reference. Their logo literally is the globe, the sea, the ocean, and a beast with multiple heads. Revelation 13, anybody? What does this have to do with Air Force? What does this have to do with airplanes or flying or or even missiles? I kid you not, this is the logo for Peterson Shriver Garrison at Peterson Air Force Base. I'll give you the link. You can it's on Wikipedia. They're not even trying to hide it. Northcom, NORAD, and this is where they want to put the Space Force? Seriously, I, I don't know how much closer you could ask for. In Revelation 13, in the Bible, they, of course, talk about a beast rising out of the sea. It says having seven heads and ten horns, one head being wounded unto death. Wounded by the sword unto death. I'm kind of paraphrasing here. I probably should have brought up the scripture before actually trying to quote it. But you guys know what I'm talking about. Revelation 13, verse 1. Well, I think it's 1 through 10 talks about this. I just, uh, I was flabbergasted. I was just stunned. I don't know how long this has been their logo. I don't know what they were trying to achieve with this. Peterson Air Force Base, Colorado Springs. The logo is literally a beast rising out of the sea. You can't make this up. You cannot make this up. So I guess, you know, it's going to come down to the idea of whether the Space Force is going to be used for good or whether the Space Force is going to be used for evil. I guess that's going to be our choice, isn't it? And as far as current events goes, guys, around the country and around the world, don't mistake my silence on this platform for apathy. Resistance comes in many forms. And sometimes you have to take the Peter Baelish from Game of Thrones angle on things in order to make peace. And I know a lot of people probably don't know anything about that reference, but some of you do. Some of you will know what I'm talking about. Calm, cool, collected, thoughtful people are going to be the ones that continue to have the ability to speak, to talk, to have a platform. So I just want to leave that there. I have enough respect for my audience that you guys have the intelligence level to know what I'm talking about. To know what I'm referencing. This too shall pass. Like, share, subscribe.